Hey everybody, and welcome to another Manga Spotlight. Uh, this one being a uh, very long ass name, and I'm gonna try my best to pronounce it, but I'm going to butcher the hell out of it, so please forgive me. So, uh, this manga is titled Gacha wo Mawashiti Nakama wo Furyasa Sai. Saikyo no Bishoujo Gundan Wu Suko Kuria Giro. <laughs> I probably got that completely wrong. Basically, the American pronunciation is uh, using gacha to increase my companions and to create the strongest girls' army corps. Uh, yeah, leave it to Japan to come up with really long ass names for their titles. I'm just going to call this Gacha. So, this is a manga series. Based off a light novel series, I believe. Um, a lot of manga series nowadays are based off of light novels and web novels. Um, this being one of them. Uh, this series, though, is freaking amazing. It's hilarious. It reminds me of a lot of Konosuba, in a way. Somewhat. It has that same kind of humor to, humor to it. It's basically Konosuba, if... Kazuma's party um, actually knew what the hell they were doing. <laughs> so let's get right into it. We start off with our main hero. His name is uh, Akura uh, Heiachi. I'm just going to call him Akura because that's easier to uh, to pronounce. Um, and he is a uh, neat. He is a huge fan of gacha games. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what gacha is, it's basically a genre in Japan of mobile mobile games that um, basically uses like loot boxes, and uh, you gotta pay with real life currency to, currency to get loot boxes. I mean, you can um, usually they're free to play games. Basically, anyone who's played a mobile free to play game, you kind of get where this is going, or even just a free play game in general, where uh, there's pay to win. That's pretty much what a gotcha game is. Uh, usually they're free to play. Um, usually they have you grinding like crazy to get in-game currency, which you can then use on loot boxes in the hopes of getting something good. But uh, a lot of people don't have patience for that, or because um, the grinding is forever, <laughs> and uh, it's easier to just pay real life money. Um, so that's what this guy is. Um, Okura is basically a gotcha game fanatic who has spent a lot of money in uh, in gotcha games and uh, one day he receives an ultra rare box um, and uh, he assumes it's going to be this character named Luna Chan uh, Luna Chan basically he's playing this game um, I believe it's kind of like the, um, the Fate Night a mobile game. I forgot what the hell it was called. But basically, it's a game where you uh, you have an army of girls and you use them to battle monsters and stuff like that. And then you gather um, in-game currency, which you then use on boxes in the hopes of getting more girls that you can add to your army. And Luna Chan is this new character that they released and everyone's trying to get it because she's super rare. So he's trying to get her. And instead, he gets an invitation to another world. So yes, this is an Isekai, Isekai uh, series. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know Isekai, I've done a video on it, which <laughs> unfortunately no one has really watched. Uh, kind of sad because I, I did put in like a lot more effort into that than I do with most other uh, manga and comic book reviews. But whatever it is, what it is. But um, Isekai is basically when a character gets transported to another world, usually a fantasy world. So it would be like if me or you uh, all of a sudden got transported into a fantasy world, like we got dropped into Lord of the Rings, we would be in an Isekai series. Um, so he gets an invitation to another world, and of course he accept, uh, accepts it, and he gets transported into uh, the gacha world, um, where he's immediately attacked uh, by a goblin. <laughs> uh, so our hero, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of show a little bit more of the first chapter just to kind of get the story going and then it'll kind of just go on to talking about the story itself uh the series itself in general so uh he hides up in a tree and um he realizes he has a smartphone on him and on his smartphone he has a guaranteed ur which i believe stands for uh, unit recruits so basically he has a guaranteed 
chance of getting a summon. So he uh, uses his, his cell phone to uh, summon uh, our next character, uh, who uh, her name is Noral Fania. So I thought this is really cool. So basically, we, we get this like dramatic uh, scene where he's like summoning uh, this character, and then she appears all majestic light, and then she immediately falls <laughs> because he summoned her on the tree. So yeah, and I just I love the detail. Like prepare for a lot of this. This series is very expressive with its characters. Um, it's freaking amazing. Like, I love the artwork in this story, um, especially when it comes to the humor. Like the artist did a freaking amazing job of just nailing down the humor. <laughs> so yeah, we get this majestic scene where she's summoned and then immediately falls <laughs> because he's like, oh shit, I forgot she was on top. I forgot I was on top of the tree. So then she immediately wipes out the goblins um, and we pretty much just get the tutorial so the tutorial is complete so we, we get a scene where uh she fights the goblins and he kind of fights the goblins too uh so um akura is not just a uh witness to everything going on he he's actually a fighter himself more than that a little bit later <laughs> we get like uh rpg elements in this as well uh so uh akura can use his uh his smartphone to basically um Almost like as if he was playing a game. Uh, he can use it to look up stats. He can use it to buy items. Um, one of those items being a uh, camping set. Uh, and I just, I love her. Exper I, I love just this style where uh, it goes from like super like serious like this. And then we just get this like little chibi kind of style artwork. Um, I freaking love her. She's adorable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, she sees freaking the door. Like she's, she's obsessed with food. That's her thing. She freaking loves food. She goes crazy for food. She's basically anyone who's, uh, read or watched Konosuba. She's darkness. If darkness actually was able to hit her enemies and is, you know, cause darkness is just basically complete defense. Like darkness couldn't hit the side of a barn if her life depended on it. Um, but, uh, our character Fania can, can actually fight. And she has this very, very cool running gag where, um, as we see, her face is constantly, half of her face is hidden. We only ever see her mouth. Um, so we have a scene where she comes out of the shower. And then we, uh, we, see, oh, we see this work. Oh, we're finally going to get her face reveal. Nope. <laughs> so whenever she doesn't have her helmet on, she's wearing this. Like, so basically, she constantly has her face hidden. We do see what her face actually looks like because... Um, of an accident, uh, she actually reveals her face, and uh, I'm not gonna spoil it. Uh, but I just thought this was like a really cool, funny gag. I kind of wish that they just kept this going throughout the rest of the series, where you just never see her face. Like her face is just constantly hidden, either by uh, like the face mask, her helmet, or just something. Like maybe uh, her her helmet is off, and there's like a tree branch in front of her blocking, or even like a dialogue, like the dialogue bubbles, like blocking her face or something. I thought that would have been kind of cool. Um, kind of like, uh, what was that Tim Allen? Home Improvement, where uh, we never saw his neighbor's face. Like, I thought that would be kind of cool. But yeah, uh, I freaking love this character. She's freaking amazing. But like I said, it, we basically like the, we get like RPG elements, um, which is kind of, kind of goes hand in hand with uh, Isekai uh, genre. So like he can like basically summon food, which as we see, she's like completely obsessed about. Uh, he can summon, as we saw earlier, um, like camping uh, gear. Um, he can use his phone to look at stats, and we even get uh, like RPG stats, and we get um, level ups and stuff like that. Um, again, kind of goes hand in hand with the Seikai series. And he can look up equipment. He can actually uh, use um, magic. Uh, no, not magic. Um, yeah, magic gems. That's that's the currency in this uh, for his first phone, anyways. Uh, coins are the currency in the game. Uh, to buy items and buy loot boxes and stuff, he needs to get magic gems. But he can use that to buy like equipment and stuff. Uh, his equipment, Excalibur, is actually just a crowbar, which I thought is freaking uh, hilarious. So yeah, he basically runs around with the buckler, which is not really even a buckler, it's just a pot lid <laughs> and a crowbar. Those are his weapons. His weapons are the lid from a pot and a crowbar. 
And there's also like a funny moment later on where he, uh, you know that meme where it's uh, it shows like pictures of people wearing like just like crazy items, and it it just says uh, uh, me when I'm wearing the best stats, me wearing random armor because it has the best stats. That's basically what he does. Um, we don't see this here, but later on we see him wearing like a bunch of just crazy like mix match of armor, and it looks really weird on him. And people even ask him, like, why are you wearing that ridiculous outfit? And he's like, because it has the best stats. <laughs> so it even plays up with that cliche, which I thought was pretty hilarious. And of course, we get the, like, most I say, Kai, uh, we get them uh, uh, signing up for an Adventures Guild. Thankfully, this whole thing happens in just literally one panel. This is it right here. It just literally cuts to them coming in. They're like, all right, then the uh, adventure registration is complete. Um, for anyone who doesn't know about the adventure registration, every single I say, Kai has a character going into not every but let's just say like 99 percent of isaac guys have uh our character going into a fantasy world and then they become an adventurer of some kind and then they have to join a guild or adventure group and we have this scene where um they join the group and then someone explains to them like hey as an adventurer you have to go out on missions yeah uh, you're giving ranks from um like g to s uh e to s whatever the rank is is usually letters with s being the best um and you know you you upgrade by doing completing quests blah 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 basically stuff straight up like a jrpg stuff that everybody kind of knows but for some reason every single series wants to just spend a whole chapter or even just half a chapter explaining all this stuff to us thankfully the series just gets it done in literally half a page they're just like all right they they they, they completed the, the the registration this is their rank now you guys don't need any more explanation because you guys already know what's going on. So yeah, magic stones. That's what it is. I think it's magic gems. Magic stones. Um, so he, he's got one magic stone. So he realizes that if he slays certain beasts, like uh, powerful enemies, sometimes there's a chance of them dropping a stone, which he can then use to buy more items and equipment and more units. So we have basically just chapters of them going on these missions. There's like a hilarious uh, arc where... He realizes that there's a event coming, kind of like uh, mobile um, free-to-play games where they have like events where, uh, you know, for one week you get uh, double XP or for one week you get um, uh, double the chance of getting a rare loot drop. So we kind of get something like that where uh, there's an, a chance of him um, getting a, uh, a UR drop. So basically him and um, Fania go out and just completely slaughter a bunch of enemies um, over and over and over again to try to get gems so that he can have uh, more chances of getting a, a UR drop, a UR loot box. And the, uh, the battle is kind of, the battles are, are, you either get two types of battles. You get battles like this, serious, really dramatic um, style artwork, um, you know, like rare encounters, or you get stuff like this is this is where I find it freaking hilarious. So you get like a moment like this where it's like they it builds up like oh no, there's a black orc, a rare encounter, a rare species. This pressure is totally different from the others. Like it builds up like oh my god, this is gonna be a tough battle, and then she just lops him off on the next page. <laughs> and I just love that. I love this. Like I love how happy she is lopping off this enemy's head. Like I freaking love her. She's adorable. So, like, she just easily <laughs> hops the head off his expression and then how happy she gets because she, you know, she gets meat. Like, he wants magic gems. She just wants food. And I just I just love this. Like, I, I've said it so many times before, but I freaking love Fonny. She's freaking adorable as hell. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to see if there's, like, any, like, figurines of her. I don't know how popular this series is, but I freaking love, love her. She's just so goddamn adorable <laughs> but yeah we, we get basically like i just love this like she yeah she wants food he wants gems so they fight you know until night falls let's keep hunting and they just go running around just <laughs> lopping off a bunch of orc heads uh i love these guys these, these characters are so like hilariously awesome like it's nice to have characters who are hilarious but also competent at the same time um, not, not to say that incompetent characters aren't funny, because, I mean, I freaking love Konosuba, and those characters <laughs> are, I mean, one of them is is literally a useless goddess. Like, they're, they're just incompetent as hell, but, um, 
I, I I also love characters like this where they're they're, they're competent. They they know how to fight. They know what they're doing, but they're still freaking hilarious in the ways that they go about doing stuff. So I'm not gonna uh, spoil too much. I will show uh, the next character that they get. So they get um, Estelle, who is a uh, magician, and she also is a really cool character. She's I don't want to say smug. She's kind of smug, but not in a putting down everyone else kind of smug, but more of a um, like she 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 sees herself as being like this great mage, and uh. Well, let's just show a little bit of it. So basically, um, we have a scene where orcs are coming, and um, Estelle's like, all right, you know, no, you guys have never gotten a chance to witness my magic before, so witness my awesome power. Boom. <laughs> she blows off the heads of every single enemy charging, and yeah, <laughs> they're just like, holy shit. <laughs> I love how, like, she's, like, so, like, cutesy, and um, you're expecting... I don't know, something like you're expecting her magic to be kind of cutesy as well. But her magic is literally violent as hell. And um, they're like, uh, hey, so like, don't you have any weaker spells? She's like, that was one of my weakest. That was like one of the weakest spells I have. But okay, how about this? So she does another weak spell where she shoots water. And again, violent. <laughs> like all her spells are OP and violent as hell. But they come inside this cute little package. <laughs> Which just, I love the contrast. Um so yeah, we, we have an like another moment where they're fighting a giant minotaur, which is actually like a really high level character. And uh she <laughs> this is why I love her. So she she goes to do her little fireball spell, and then of course we <laughs> we have uh Akura and uh Fanya like running their ass off while grabbing like the other ventures nearby. Um and I just I love how like the fireball gets closer and just the reaction of the minotaur. <laughs> so like she's just like I, I just I, I love this like this cute little pose while a huge explosion goes off and everyone's like hiding and like you know worried as hell behind their rock and uh yeah we just see the minotaur just like blowing up and um here's like one of the reasons why i love uh Estelle right here so uh she's like he 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 mm, phew ha huh. as i thought this magic feels the best like she's like <laughs> she's like uh megumin from konosuba if Megumin can use more than one ability per day, but with a the um, fascination of uh, basically darkness is, you know how darkness gets all like hot and bothered whenever she gets um, treated like crap? Well, Estelle is kind of like that, only instead of being treated like crap, she gets hot and bothered whenever she uses her magic to blow her enemies a tiny bit. Um, <laughs> oh, I fucking love these characters. Um, but yeah, this is, um, gotcha. Uh, really long ass name. I'm not going to say it again because I'm just going to butcher it. The artwork for this, as you guys saw throughout the video, like I, I love it. I think it's really great. Like I love how, um, it goes like really detailed in some moments, but then it'll go like simplistic and stylized in other moments, just depending on what kind of, um, tone that they want to convey like when you get like you know comedy you get like this like chibi kind of stylized artwork when you get something that you think is going to be like oh like serious fan service you get a more realistic or at least a more detailed uh drawing um and i just i like the nice blend i like how like you get fights like this where you get you get actual like pretty cool badass scenes um and then you'll get this chibi style fight like this I like the mix between the two, depending on, again, the um, the tone that they're trying to convey. Um, so the artwork is great. Uh, the translation is really, really good. That's another thing about reading, um, like, fan-translated mangas, uh, is that the, the translation can be anywhere from great to terrible, <laughs> especially the grammar. Like, a lot of times it seems like people are just using Google Translate, so you get just, like, really poorly written grammar just kind of like did no one decide to proofread this whatsoever like and just an editor um i know i really shouldn't say anything because i mean people are taking the time out to translate for free so i should just be happy that something is being translated but it is nice 
when you get something like this, when you get something actually translated very well. Yeah, I, I the characters are are fantastic. I, I love all these characters. Like none of these, each, each of these characters has their own personality. They all feel different, but they're all lovable in their own ways. Um, they all have their flaws, but their flaws just make them even more hilarious and awesome. So yeah, uh, I highly recommend checking this out. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys haven't already, please, please subscribe. Please hit the bell for notification. Please leave a like if you enjoy the video. Feel free to comment down below. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have a great one, and I'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>